Hi, this is Cody with Platform 9, and what I want to show you how to do today is get up and running with the OpenStack CLI clients on top of, a, of an Ubuntu system. So um, what the OpenStack CLI clients do is allow you to um, create scripts and whatnot to um, interact with the OpenStack um, environment without having to use the the web UI or so maybe do some advanced things that the web UI doesn't have in it. Um, so to get up and running first we need an Ubuntu system right so I've created this using one of the provided images by Platform 9. We have um, one of the provided flavors is in one small. I put this on a tenant network gave it a floating IP address and a security group that allowed me to SSH into it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and SSH into this now. Um, we'll do an SSH as Ubuntu at that system. And since I have my SSH key um, passed into this, it just lets me write in. So um, the next thing that we want to do is I've um, put the instructions up on the internet here at pf9.io slash Ubuntu client. Um, and so uh, what you can do is just follow along with these and we're going to do these in order. So we're going to do a sudo apt-get update and uh, this should happen very quickly, right? It's not actually updating all of the packages that you have on your system. It's just downloading a new list of uh, what, what the packages are and uh, what versions. So now we do need to install some prerequisites. So um, this is uh, pip, gcc, and a couple other things, um, development environments for the clients that we're installing. So this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video. So if you are following along at home, go ahead and pause this now, and I'm going to speed up the video. Okay, okay now that that's complete, um, the next thing we want to do is install a prerequisite for these packages. So um, we'll need to install PyTZ. Uh, this needs to be installed first um, and because the Python clients will fail uh, to install if uh, that's not installed. They won't install it um, gracefully. So we'll do that. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and install all of these clients, the Nova Admin client, Solometer client, so on and so forth. Um, most of these uh, you're not going to need, um, or maybe not all of them, but um, every once in a while the standalone OpenStack client doesn't have the exact thing that you need and you need to go directly to the Nova client or Cinder client or Neutron client. Um, so um, we're going to go ahead and install them all and you'll probably live inside of the OpenStack client most of the time. Again, I'll spin up, sp speed up this video so you don't have to watch this uh, carry on. Okay, now that that's complete, everything's installed. Um, so the next thing we want to do is test these clients out. So let's go to the access and security section flip over to API access and grab your OpenStack.rc. So we'll go ahead and copy that. Um, we will uh, create an OpenStack.rc here and paste these in. Right. So uh, the thing you need to do is update your password inside of this. So we'll go ahead and put my password in here. Um, or you can update this to make it prompt you for a password using a little bit of bash scripting. Um, we'll go ahead and save that and then we want to source this file. Um, so we're going to source openstack.rc and then just to make sure that this works we're going to run an openstack server list. And this should uh, go out, talk to openstack and bring me back all of the servers that are uh, showed up inside of our tenant in a nice tabled view. So that there they are, this worked. Um, and if we go over to the instances section, you should see all of those same instances here. So that's all there is to it, to getting up and running with the OpenStack clients. You can now utilize those um, and get to scripting. Thank you very much.